one of the main, uh, let's say, principles that is aligned with AI is the fact that is risk, th there is a risk-based approach to uh, AI usage, deployments, and technologies, and the development of this technology. And of course, AI promises uh, to have an impact uh, on this kind of uh, freedom and, uh, and the fundamental rights as well, okay? We will uh, discuss a little bit later on about this. So it is important to recognize the difficulty, more and more complex infrastructure, platform, and uh, especially digital platforms, and on the other hand, the risk that is implicit, uh, is hidden in this new technique. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's becoming common sense um, that uh, in the future, um, products of a generative AI uh, should contain a watermark. A watermark that would allow the public audience to um, distinguish these products from you know, other cultural items that are not, not actually generated by artificial intelligence. You know, I wonder whether this is a solution culturally. So if, if we can, you know, uh, give a technical uh, answer to a problem that is not only a technical one, but it's also a cultural problem, it's a social problem. It's the way we deal with new kinds of, um, of fake. And I, I, I wanted to ask our, you know, present audience, what is in your opinion, um, the most powerful technology that we have nowadays to create fake. You immediately think about media. But to me, from a philosophical point of view, the most powerful technology we have to create the fake is language. So, in order to uh, make the people understand, society at large, mm -hmm. understand what they are using, and what are the limitations and advantages. I believe that this is a very important part here, uh, which is uh, instrumental with what we say. This balance between technologies on the one hand and uh, awareness and understanding and, and training even. I believe that training is very important because we need uh, technical people or uh, um, hybrid, pro possibly profiles, uh, that need to manage, help manage this kind of, uh, of, uh, of tools. But that's, that also is a matter of a long process of uh, you know, reaching a consensus that involved the law as well. You know that the definition of tomatoes as fruits depended on a legal uh, clash uh, of import-export of tomatoes. You know, and uh, that created this, this quarrel that ended up with the definition of tomatoes as fruits and not as vegetables. So in that, that, that case as well, there is the social consensus, there is the legal reception of the social consensus. And, uh, and, and of course, you know, we shouldn't accept a legal consensus that is totally against you know, our awareness, our social consensus, our instinct of what is fair.